At long last, welcome to the installation video for the Doomsday Diesel transmission adapter for the Mercedes-Benz OM6 aught series and applicable M-series engines. It was a long road to get to this point. I am so happy to be sharing this video with you. It's just a supplemental video for the written instructions. This is to give you the visual cues, show you how everything works. I don't actually call out torque specs in this video because the torque specs for each adapter are going to be a little different. This is to just show you how everything goes together in case you're having trouble following along with the written instructions. So, like I said, it's been a long road to get here. A ton of time, design time went into everything. There were a lot of components that I really wanted to patent because I think I've got something a lot different here than anything else available out on the market. So, come on in. Let's go through, we're going to install some Jeep adapters here in this video, so can't wait to see what you guys think. Let's dive on in. The first step with any adapter, manual or automatic, is we're going to mate the plate to the block. So the first thing we need to do is clean the mating surface on the block here. Make sure our oil pan is flush or past the block surface. A lot of these rear sumps, when you put them on, you can actually mount them so they stick back beyond this face and that would screw up the adapter plate how it mounts so make sure that's flush then I like to take um, a scraper and go around scrape any dirt off then go around with brake parts cleaner wash it all down really good your kit will come with two new M10 dowel pins you'll just put those in the back of the block then we're ready to put our plate on So I'm just going to temporarily mount the plate on here for right now. I'm just going to put two of these bolts in to hold the plate on tight. For the sake of speeding things up in this video, I'm going to use my cordless impact driver. I've got it on kind of like a finish screw setting. It only goes not even, I can't even turn it in my hand. So I prefer that you install all of this and torque it with a normal wrench. Don't use an impact driver or an impact wrench that's all the tighter this will get it and that's okay if you're just installing you know speeding the screws in and then torquing them with a wrench but we're going to tighten this up here make sure everything fits nice and flush now the big difference with my adapter kit for the 6 aught series is how I mount the starter right here so I've got these recessed holes you can take this bolt put it in there and thread into the starter. The problem with this is you have to remove the transmission to get to the starter bolts. If you want to mount it like this though, I've made it like this so that you can. These sit recessed in here. So I don't provide the hardware if you go this route because I'm assuming most people aren't going to go this route. If you do, it's a standard socket head cap screw M10 and then I actually use a 3 8 washer to fit inside here. Here's an M10 washer. As you can see, it's too big. It goes through into your starter like so. Enough about that though. I wanna show you the cool thing that I've come up with. So these holes are threaded, which you'll see down inside, and your kit's gonna come with these little inserts. Now they're gonna have a red coating on them, and you have to scrub that off. I like to soak them in a little acetone and then you use a stainless steel brush to scrub that crap off. It's actually uh, pressure activated glue, but half the time it doesn't work. So I scrub that off. So you'll soak it in red Loctite and then take a small pry bar or a big flathead screwdriver and we're gonna thread this in here. Now the reason I've, I do it like this, I have the plate butted up against the block and so that'll show me when this thing is bottomed out. You can install these on the bench, but then you have to be really careful that you install it flush. If you install it past the front side of the plate, then your adapter plate won't marry down flat. This way you can't go 
beyond flush. And you do want to get it as far in as you can. And you don't have to tighten it. You don't have to tighten it at all. That's not going to do you any good. I'm going to just turn it in until it stops and then let the red lock tight set up. That's usually going to take a little while. Now for the rest of the adapter plate installation, you'll just put your socket head cap screws in here. So as you can see here, I've got the rear sump pan on this engine and I've got the whole pattern now added. So that actually gives you 10 total fasteners to join the adapter plate to the block. So follow your written instructions, apply blue Loctite or medium strength thread locker to all these. I'm not going to do the lubrication and the Loctite in this video because this is just a mock-up. I'm not actually permanently installing this adapter on this engine. And I will not call out torque specs in this video because this is a generic video for all of my 6 aught series adapters. So all of your bolts are Loctited and installed, torqued while the Loctite is still wet. Now we're ready to mount up our starter. One other point I forgot is the OM648 starter will work on the 606. I have one here. mates up just fine. The problem is you can only marry this um, to this adapter with the bolts going through the adapter plate from inside the bell housing. So I definitely don't recommend using the 648 starter. Yes, they are cheaper and easier to find, but you can't mount them externally. Instead, we're going to get our stock 606 starter. Get your socket head cap screws with washers. You don't even have to drill the threads out of the starter. These will pass right through the threads. And it's as simple as that. Now if you're wondering what you should use on the starter bolts themselves, I would probably use either blue Loctite or anti-seize. I want to put them in uncoated, and I definitely want to use red Loctite because you'll never get them out if you use red Loctite. The, the beauty of this setup and this design is as you're unthreading those bolts, if you're trying to take the starter off, it'd be trying to tighten the insert against the block. So you don't have to worry about driving that insert out of the block. Now it's up to you if you want to use Loctite because you're afraid of the bolts vibrating loose, go ahead and use some blue Loctite. At a minimum though, you want to use anti-seize um, because the inserts are stainless steel and with a steel bolt, um, technically that could corrode over time. So you want to have something on there. You don't want to put them in dry. I almost forgot some of these kits will actually have a spacer plate and you'll want to put your dowel pins into the adapter plate and then the spacer is designed to be a nice tight fit over those dowels so that when you're sliding the engine down into the engine bay, the plate doesn't fall off. If you are having troubles with this plate falling off, you can get some sticky grease and just put a couple dabs on the back side, and that should kind of glue it to the aluminum adapter plate to keep it in place. And that's the installation of the adapter plate and the starter. Next, we'll move on to the crankshaft adapter. All right, so for the automatic setup, we'll start by stripping everything down to the crankshaft. Make sure that's all nice and clean. If you've got this style of flywheel flex plate setup, we'll put both of them back on. So this style has the single piece um, separate flex plate. Now the key here is you'll use the supplied ARP hardware to fasten this because the bolt heads on the factory hardware is too thick and it messes with our torque converter adapter. So the proper way to install these is you put the Loctite on the threads, you put the ARP lube under the head, then you torque it. We're just doing this for mock-up purposes, so I'm not going to actually install all the hardware here. Now you might have the other style of flex plate, which is actually two of these flex plates stacked on top of each other. They're riveted together um, with these middle holes to a ring gear for the starter. Now if you're doing the automatic setup, 
the bolts going through the flex plate into the torque converter adapter will hold that all together. If you're going to a manual setup, you lose these bolts that are actually clamping the works together. So you need to find some bolts that'll fit through those holes. And uh, I'd recommend lock nuts and or Loctite and make sure those don't come apart because if you're doing a manual setup and all you have is the rivets holding the thing together, they could vibrate out over time. For the automatic setup though, it's gonna behave like a factory essentially. So if you've got the, the two piece riveted together flex plate though, you'll bolt it up all the same except for you'll use your ARP hardware. Next we gotta prep our torque converter adapter. This is a big piece of aluminum. It's got steel inserts. These are permanent. Um, they've actually got pins that lock them into the threads. So these will not come out. And then we've got a couple features on here. This recess here is to locate our pilot stub. So our pilot stub actually has a bigger radius on one side. That's the side that's going to go into the engine. The other side is just a minimal radius, so this locates into this slot, and I tried to make this as tight as possible without making it a big pain. Just drop this um, pilot stub into the freezer. If that still doesn't make it fit, you might have to throw the aluminum piece into the oven, heat it up to about 200, 250 degrees, and it'll drop right in. Then you'll come to the back side here. You've got an M8, an M8 flanged head bolt that sits recessed down inside here. You want to put blue Loctite on this bolt, and it's not a critical um, torque. I torque it to about 15 foot pounds, between 12 and 18 foot pounds, somewhere in there. All this is doing is making sure this never comes off. So you put that blue Loctite on and then you're torquing it just to make sure this seats all the way down against. So some big perks about switching to the steel torque converter pilot stub is number one, this is made out of tool steel. So instead of being aluminum, it's nice hard steel. You're going to be able to more aggressively line up that transmission to the engine without fear of permanently destroying an aluminum stub. It is tool steel, so it's hardenable. If that would ever need to be done, I could have these hardened. Um, they're replaceable, very easily replaceable. So if you would destroy one um, for whatever reason, they are replaceable. So I can just ship you one and bolt it in. And lastly, they're steel, so I can plate them so they won't rust. Now here on the back side, we have this indexing feature. So you can't ding this up because then you wouldn't be able to get your other adapter in here. So be very careful with this. And then here's basically the crankshaft simulator. So this simulates the crankshaft off the back of the engine that your transmission was originally married to. And so this lip right here is what indexes. So make certain that you don't get this dinged up either. Again, you might have to throw this piece in the freezer and then when this is warm, it goes down in there. It's an offset hole pattern. There's only two ways to clock it. Then you'll take your supplied spanner wrench and this actually fits into these half inch holes. They're clearance holes to to dodge the rivet in the, the flex plate on the Mercedes. But I've also made them so that I can put this spanner wrench in here, take a half inch drive wrench. Now you have a way to hold this while you torque all of these. And this spanner wrench is a very tight fit because we don't want to have a loose fit because that would actually mar the insides of these holes. We want it to be tight. So when you get this, you might have to bend these in towards each other or bend it out away from each other because it's going to be very tight. So here's what our final product looks like. Got the pilot stub sticking out on this side. You've got the crank adapter out here. 
This one's been bolted on, everything's been torqued down. So again, you're gonna follow the torque specs and your written instructions, but you're gonna put medium strength thread locker on the threads of these bolts and the ARP lube underneath the head. And that ARP lube under the head makes a significant difference in your torque. Um, it's a lot easier to spin this, spin the bolts with the lube under the heads. So you absolutely cannot omit that or it will um, definitely skew your torque value. So once this is all together, then we actually have to put the factory flex plate on. So I've designed all of the six aught parts to mimic the, the crankshaft, the transmission, was originally married to so you can use the original transmission parts. There's no custom clutches or flywheels or flex plates. It's all factory stuff with factory hardware. So we put the flex plate on, we put our washer on. These aren't actually the bolts for this one, but just so I can clamp this together to show you how this all fits up. So from here back, everything is gonna be factory specs. So factory hardware, factory torque specs, um, and again, you can put that spanner wrench here on this side so that you can torque these fasteners down. So after this, we're going to put the torque converter on here and you're going to torque that like factory. Now, in this case, you can see the bolt holes. You can access them from this side uh, with a normal, with a standard torque wrench. Some of these six odd adapters, the pattern actually gets overlapped by this adapter. And so you have two options to be able to torque them. You can use a crow's foot or you can use a closed end wrench with a fish scale to um, calculate your torque on those bolts. So I'm not strong enough to uh, lift a torque converter on top of all this. So um, let's pretend the torque converter's on here and we have it, the torque converter and all this installed in the transmission. I like to clean the crankshaft out, use some emery cloth, some brake parts cleaner, make sure that's nice and clean so things will slide in and out easily. But this is gonna go in right like so. Then you'd have to actually rotate the transmission or the crankshaft to line up your holes. And then you'll use your supplied ARP flex plate to torque converter hardware. So pretending this was inside the transmission, you'd have the bell housing going on. Make sure your dowel pins are installed. And then you'd torque to spec, rotate, bolt up your torque converter, simulator bolts, and then you're done. Now I would recommend before you do a final installation of everything, just mock things up like this. Make sure your flex plate is gonna clear the starter because I have seen some aftermarket flex plates with goofy counterbalance weights welded on in areas that the OEM flex plates didn't have any and they could potentially interfere with that. So just keep an eye out for that. Um, save yourself the headache of having to pull everything back out of the truck by mocking everything up first. So thanks for checking the video out. Even if you aren't a customer, you're just wanting to check out how things go together. Maybe you're thinking about being a customer. I hope you will be. For those of you who are, thank you very much for your support. You help me live my dream every day, building awesome stuff like this. So, of course, if you have questions, you can always call and email me. And with that, thanks, and we'll see you in another video.